futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day all, Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up for this Tuesday and this is the 9th of January 2018 just after 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. The day started off with a surprise by Japan where they're starting to target yield rather than just buying bonds from corporates and the government and blah blah blah. It's, it's a change in focus. Some thought that could signal maybe possibly tightening there. The government says no, but the actions say yes, so it's confusing. That led to the bonds and notes absolutely capitulating. So now you're looking at 10-year notes with a yield of just around 2.5, just slightly over it, and the bond market surprised. Remember, we've seen a flattening of the yield. All of a sudden, what happened today is you got a pop in the bond market it just suddenly came alive that's a big big change as to what's going on that in turn impacted the dollar which got a good bounce closing near the highs of the day the euro came down a little bit on that news and the traders got confused and i understand it are the metals going to be able to hold up with all this don't know the stock market saw a good rally in the S&P and the Dow, but by the end of the day, you pulled back into the NASDAQ and into the Russell. And the key is, did you stay over the upper Bollinger Bands again? So let's get to the chart action and see what they did. First off, there's no question, you've, you're going parabolic on the upside. Doesn't mean it has to last, but this is what you're calling it on a weekly chart. When you take a look at a daily bar chart, this is the beginning of the year, and as I look at it from 26.75, with today's high, you were only 15 points away from a 100-point gain. That's my definition of a market running to the upside all of a sudden. When we look at the price action, it all began right here, and it really didn't set a trend. What you had was a higher high and a lower low on the swing line, and it just took off. Once the market cleared, and we can look at it right through here, once it cleared 26.98, just running to the upside. Nothing stays up forever, we know that, and at any point you can get a correction, but this market's not showing any of that. And in fact, yesterday I used that whoosh sound. I said, can you hear the vacuum cleaners? It's pulling in all the money. It's still continuing to do that. We're far away from the 18-day average, which is now about 60 points away, the better part of all this gain over the past six days or so. And you did manage to close over the upper Bollinger Band. So you have one day over it. In fact, if you, uh, let me do it this way. One day over, two, all these days are over the upper Bollinger Band. So it starts right here where you're over it. Day one, two, three, four, five. And now the question is, can you get to that sixth or seventh day? It's rare. Generally, this is where the market moves to the right-hand side. Does that mean you're going to have a big break? No, that's not what it means. The fact that you're five days in a row over it tells you the market is strong. But it also tells you the market, if you believe in Bollinger Bands, that they only stay over at 5% of the time, you're ending that 5% area, and it's something you have to be careful of. How long does it have to stay under it? Only one day to resume. So, power. What else happened? the embedded reading took place. So I have a market that is pushing out the Bollinger Bands from right here. They were sideways with a, a bent. I think you could see that to the upside, not really getting back under the 18-day average. And then they began right on this day on January 4th, starting to push the market higher and higher. And as the band is moving out, and that's what you have going on. You're going to see a failure in some of the others as they tried to do that and they're pulling back. In the NASDAQ, you finished at 66.87. You Instead of closing over the band, you pulled back under it. Again, a sign of strength. But now it's back within that 5% time. So now it goes back to zero in terms of it's not stretched out. Also, you're embedding the reading. Both numbers there, there, and there. Take a look. 
both numbers over 80, both numbers over 80, both numbers over 80. So you have an embedded reading. If the red line closes under 80, we get a target back to the 18-day average. It hasn't. It's saying that on the breaks, the market's still going to have buying support in the Dow. The market wasn't as stretched out as you were in the other two indices. So you've got over the Bollinger Band day one, over it yesterday, over it the day before, and right here, the market closed at 2053 and that puts it at four days over in a row. So all the markets are set to do a, a move to the right. But today was also a Tuesday, and you often hear the word Tuesday reversals. We didn't get a Tuesday reversal, not in these markets. We got a reversal into the uh, Russell. It did back off a little bit, and the market is trying to embed. Will it keep that reading tomorrow? That's the first one I look at because it's been the laggard of the indices. Notice how it hasn't pushed out that trading band yet. In the VIX, with all the craziness, all you've done is gone back to the 18-day average, and there you sit. I was on today Australian TV, and the announcer's going, look at the size of the move today. And I'm going, that's what's wrong. People think that when you're up, for example, in the Dow from 25,400 or 300, and you go up 100 points or down 100 points, it's a big move. In terms of percentages, it's actually quite small. It's just that we're used to hearing 100 points. You're not getting those type of moves right now. What you're getting is a market that is because it's at higher levels, you get these moves and they're not big percentage moves. In TLT, this is something that you've got to look at. You're getting a crossover possibility tomorrow where the 100-day average is going to be crossed over by the 18. In other words, short-term average can get under the long term. You are approaching the Bollinger Band, and this market has done a really neat job of each time you get to it, and you can go back in time, you get a bounce away from it often. I'm not going to say always, but often. So I expect to see short covering come into this market tomorrow against the lower Bollinger Band. Same in the bond market. You got today within two ticks of hitting the Bollinger Band. We'll see if it can hit it tomorrow. You're oversold, stretched out to the downside. Same thing in the T-notes. Now, if you look in the past, when you've hit that, you've typically bounced away, even if you were breaking down in a pattern. Sometimes it takes a few days, but certain markets pay better attention than others. I would expect to get a bounce out of it. Not a trend change, a bounce. When I'm looking at the dollar index, I had to today say I am wrong in my initial thought. I thought the dollar was going to be one of these currencies that stayed with the embedded reading. Yesterday it stayed and I thought today would be a day that it could gain it back. It lost it instead. What does it imply? It implies price in the 18-day average, unless you get a big break in the dollar tomorrow. It's the only day it can happen, are probably going to come together. Is it far away? It isn't. It's 24 points, so let's not lose sight that this is only a, a rally into a key resistance. But it also set up the break in the euro, which fell back, lost its embedded reading completely, and back to that zone that I tell you so often, that, that, that line in the sand, and that's where the market seems to be trying to set up whatever it's going to do. Aussie dollar is set tonight, if it opens steady to lower, to lose its embedded reading, and maybe it can get back to the 100-day average of closes to see what it wants to do next. In other words, I think the currency moves that we started the beginning of the year out, and I realize it's only January 9th, but we had these one-sided moves as everybody came back in on January 2nd. We're getting a flip-flop of it right now, and I tried to avoid that, and I don't think that the market can avoid it right here. It just seems to be that that's what it wants to do. In the end, notice the sideways first of the Bollinger Bands and how the market's just hugging now the 18-day average. You're not carrying up to the upper band. You're not carrying down to the lower band. And traders that are looking for trends in a currency like this are probably getting chopped. Some of you don't want me covering Bitcoin, but I got to tell you, I don't know if it's a currency, a metal, but I know that it's popular. So I want to cover it. It's that simple. And what it's done is it too went down to a lower band. It's a 15-minute chart, got its bounce away, went back to the 18-day average and down. If these markets ever really let go to the downside, it'll be thrilling to watch. If they take off to the upside, it'll be thrilling to watch. But the technology of the major 
uh, coins, the, these alt currencies as they like to call themselves, it's there in the blockchain. It's not going to go away. Here's the March Brent versus the WTI crude. As you can see, a big bounce. Now what happened in crude is we got a draw today. The trade is looking in the morning for only a two and a half million barrel draw on the EIA number. The API number came out with a draw of 11 million barrels. Admittedly, you had a build in gasoline and distillates of roughly 8.9 to 9 million barrels. So net, you really have a 2 million barrel draw. But, 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 this market too has gone almost into a parabolic move. Take a look at how it's running. It ran against the Bollinger Band. Remember what I said, when you have an embedded reading, often, when you have this, the breaks are buying opportunities to the pros. Notice how the market stalled, and today, new high for the whole move. If we take a look at WTI, it's the same pattern. I look at the embedded reading, and that's, to me, what's drawing the market. In the rebob gasoline, higher lows, higher highs, embedded reading. So I'm viewing this market still upside potential. I thought when it started failing here with the, uh, as you can see, you lost the embedded reading right on this day. You could only gain it back the next day, which it did, or did it? No, it didn't. Both numbers were not over 80 and the day before they weren't. So don't have them there or there. So the market does it embed. Let's see, day one, two, three, there's your embedded reading. Here's the embedded uh, continuing, day four. So this area here was matched by right afterwards, just strength in the market. And this market seems to just be running to the upside. Nat gas fell back to that line in the sand, just did this on uh, Friday, bounced away from it. And now with the cold weather snap coming back into play. Yeah, we're going to get warm for a few days, but then if you look at the uh, temperature, we're going to drop again like a rock, and the market got a strong bid off of that today. So you put it together, and what a time in these markets. Volatility, absolutely crazy. So if you're a trader that likes the volatility, you're getting it. And in some of the markets, you're going to get more on Friday because the big grain reports come out. That'll impact the meat markets and the grain markets. We write on all this. If you're an option trader, strategy writing about it. Our crews do all of these different markets. And no, you don't have to get all this. You choose which ones you want. So if you haven't tried the Lynn Research, it's free to you to give it a try. You'll see what our customers get and what they have choices from. How do you get it? Give us a call. Go to our website. And at our website, you'll see our carousel of free offers. Just simply click on any of the forms there. You'll be able to fill out what you want. Click up here if you're watching me on YouTube. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.